So my name is uh, Raj Sundar. I'm a product manager at uh, Wireless Land Business Unit at Zebra. So I'm going to talk about you know what's under the hood with uh, Zebra Insight. Okay. So we talked about you know what is Insight. Insight is our network analytics platform that provides uh, real-time monitoring as well as you know historical trends. Um, and uh, one of the goals for us is to you know perform at scale. Um, so the benefits, you know, some of the troubleshooting tools, you know, faster resolution, you know, help desk user uh, can quickly get to what they want uh, with, within few clicks. And uh, with a combination of, you know, uh, browser-based troubleshooting tools like Packet Capture, Wireless Debug Log that you can launch right from your browser, plus the dashboard that double up as troubleshooting tool and the interactive floor map, uh, you know, it is, you know, you know, troubleshooting is, quick troubleshooting is one of the goals for this product, uh, one of the features. Um, the interface itself is HTML5 based and uh, it's very responsive and uh, easy to use and practically there's no training required. And uh, so the, the benefit is, you know, improves the efficiency of the network engineers and you don't have to do site visits or you know, call up that non-existent IT staff at your edge uh, to debug an issue. They can do all of that uh, centrally. Um, a whole bunch of reports uh, that are you know, including the PCI reporting. So we, we talked about the ADSP platform, which is our you know, regular you know, standard uh, security platform that runs on sensors, advanced security platform that runs on sensors. Uh, but the access point can also double up uh, you know, on the radio share mode, you know, provide the, you know, uh, security features for that. So which we pull out of that, we can pull, you know, PCI reporting capabilities, and that is also part of our reporting. Um, is that just straight up like off-channel scanning? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So the goal um, for us when we start, uh, so this product is shipping today. So we started shipping in uh, July. It is uh, on as part of our Wing 5.8 release. Uh, so we started to build this about a year back. Uh, one of the primary goals for this is to you know build a highly scalable platform, right? And this is again the features. Um, so the goal is scale and more scale and uh, performance at scale, right? So we have uh, hundreds of customers with, uh, you know, 10 plus, uh, you know, 10,000 plus AP deployments. And then we have a whole bunch of them probably runs into hundreds that are touching about, you know, about 50 to 60K uh, running a single network with, you know, 50 to 60,000 access points and some touching about 100K access points. So our goal is to meet that, you know, 100K number in terms of scale uh, with the inside platform. Okay. Um, so other, um, so our primary customers uh, are in distributed uh, retail and uh, transportation logistics. So these are huge operations. And uh, so they have an internal IT department where they run this, though they are short staffed at the, at the branches, uh, they would like to run this on-prem. And they would run it. They would like to run this as an appliance. So that's one of our goals. So fit this into an appliance model or a virtual appliance model that they can run it on their own NOC. And uh, the ability to support uh, multiple roles, uh, which we talked that's a more a functionality requirement. And then it's, it should provide a real-time view. Not you know, it's not just collect you know statistics, aggregate the information, just provide dashboards. But it should also provide real-time monitoring and troubleshooting capabilities at scale, and all that packed into an exceptionally responsive user interface. So those are the goals. And one of the other points to mention here is that if cost is not a consideration, and if you had to deal with enormous amount of data, you this system, like you know, is cloud ready. It, it uses cloud scale technologies. It can be put on an Amazon, but the top 100, 200 like retail customers or TNL customers are not there yet. Like you know, in like you know, their their mentality is not geared towards cloud. One of the prime reasons is concerns around security, concerns around data residency. You'll have guest users coming in their MAC addresses, being in a like a domain outside of their four walls is a concern. And while the trend around cloud is real, like, you know, and, and many of these customers are going to be moving, it's not happening yet. 
at the pace at which we would like to see them move to cloud, right? And that is why the scale and delivering an on-prem solution for these large distributed customers is, is very important for us. Okay, so we laid out the scale challenge, uh, 100K access points, and then even you know if you're, you're looking at uh, even if you're looking at 20 connected uh, simultaneous connected uses at any given access points, you're running into uh, two plus million simultaneous clients. So we had to collect uh, usage stats uh, for each AP radio wireless LAN and then you know stats for the clients and the client roaming data and if there are rogues that are detected by the built-in whips so we collect that as well and then if you application usage at the client level at every client level um, and then uh, we also have the ability to detect destinations um, and so you also get a history of the destinations that a guest user visited um, so that's a whole bunch of information. And in a large network with uh, 50,000 access points, the amount of uh, syslogs that get generated, we also aggregate that into this platform. And uh, we talked about earlier, talked about the RF domain and some of the smart RF decisions that are made locally, which, you know, whether it is uh, channel uh, changes or, you know, power assignments, so our client roaming. So all these are also, you know, all these events are also captured. Okay, so what that translates to is like, uh, so with 100K access points and you know, probably four or five wireless LAN configured on each of the radio, um, that translates into about a million data points and uh, another two million clients who have usage and other info from the clients, another two million data points. Um, and then application visibility. So if you're looking at you know five to ten applications and ten destinations for each client, um, so you're looking at 20 million data points to collect, um, and another 20 million for the destinations, and uh, the amount of syslog that we collect uh, from these 100k access points. So it's a, it's pretty. Uh, so we're looking at north of you know 50 plus million data points to collect. And then you have to do this real time. So the real time is not, or near real time, right? So we're going to do this pretty much every um, 30 seconds to a five minute frequency, depending on, so it's a knob that is available. The lowest you can grow, go is about 30 seconds, okay? So you're looking at processing about 50 million data points every 30 seconds. Um, so in terms of storage, I/O and storage requirements, storage today may not be a huge challenge, so you can grow, especially if you are on a cloud scale, as uh, Sanjay was pointed to. Um, so with the I/O is a challenge in terms of, you know, especially when you fit this into an appliance or a virtual appliance that's going to run on your data center. Um, so we also have to consider in terms of, you know, how we replicate this information. Uh, make high availability and redundancy requirements, so you have huge sets of data that needs to be replicated. Uh, and the storage requirements are also determined by, you know, how long you're going to hold this data, uh, or like when you start archiving outside the visibility that Insight provides and, you know, storage for future. Um, so that is another consideration. So. And we also start aggregating information. So we collect raw data, these 50 million data points that hit the server, and then we roll them, roll them up. Um, so in order to provide real-time trend analytics, like the top 10, uh, you know, top 10 APs or top 10 applications across, you know, and rolling it up up to a site or a system-wide, um, so that. We, we also need to look at, you know, how that is rolled up, right? So that's another consideration. Um, Sanjay alluded to this earlier. So should we optimize this for writes or reads, right? So obvious choice would be, you know, we collect all this data once, and then most of the time you're just going to, you know, either slice and dice or, you know, analyze this data. So it's going to be multiple reads. But uh, the challenge we also have is, you know, we don't have the luxury of scaling it horizontally on a cloud platform where you can have, you know, number of instances running where you have the ability to shard this database across multiple instances. So we don't have that luxury. So we, um, we had to make a decision. We had to balance this between, you know, how we optimize it for reads as well as writes. So the, the 
um, so some of the architectural elements leverages our, you know, the platform features like Mahadev talked about uh, the out of domain at the edge, which makes the local decisions. Um, so what we are doing is instead of collecting, um, you know, some of these data points from each access point that senses information through that SSL tunnel. Um, so the RFDM kind of the out of domain manager consolidates some of this information. And uh, you know, and also it it does a little bit of processing. So the processing is also distributed instead of you know bringing uh, pretty you know unprocessed data and processing it on the server side. So what you know we are leveraging uh, you know <coughs> how you format this uh, data into a format that can directly be stored into a NoSQL database. So that happens at the order of domain level. So that translates into, you know, it brings down the order of magnitude by three orders uh, from 50 million data points. So you're looking at about thousands of messages, you know, hitting on your server. And in the okay. event of an outage, how long will the, the RF domain master buffer that much of information? The about, uh, it, it varies between 10 minutes to, you know, 20 minutes, depending on, you know, the type of the access yeah, point. Access point like, it depends on, like, the, the tier of the access point. The oh, okay. Tier access point, like, you know, hold larger memory. Okay. You got a mic? Yeah. And so, at the, so once you exceed the sort of the limitations of the AP, you just start losing that data? Right. Okay. So, yeah, so, so like this is like, you would have it. holes in that. Uh, but which is all right when you're looking at trend, right? So you have some gaps, but it is there. But you, it doesn't uh, in the in the bigger picture, you don't lose necessarily the information that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, so one thing that we are doing is like leveraging the R of domain and you know reducing the number of messages. And here again, we have to be cautious because the size of the document can also exceed. Like if you're looking at uh, you know uh, an R of domain with 128 APs with multiple wireless lands configured and 20 clients on each of those radios, uh, the document size uh, you know we don't you know it can split into you know multiple records on the NoSQL database side. So we we have some limitations by the database vendor, but you know, so we overcame that as well as to you know how we compress this information and when we transport this across. Okay. So in terms of the WAN requirement itself, it is not huge. Uh, it varies between anywhere between about 30 kbps to you know 300 kbps, depending on the size of the network at the edge. Okay. Uh, other it's a trickle. Like five kilobits per second for Small deployments yeah. might go up to 30 kilobits per okay. second for 128 yeah. access points and above. Um, other thing that we are doing is, uh, in order to you know, pro you know, get that uh, responsive interface, uh, some of the you know near-term data are also as part of the in the RAM in the database in memory. So you get you know all the currently co connected clients and also you know look up information like you know the type of client, or, you know device profile, OS profile, all of that you know are easily searchable and available on the, on your uh, in-memory database. Um, and also you saw on the left side, so you can have, you know, sites running up to 10,000 sites uh, or, you know, in a large network. Um, so the directory lookup for that, all of that as part of the, you know, uh, in-memory database. Uh, the search functionality that uh, you have in terms of locating a client or an access point where you can use a global search on the left nav or within the dashboard you have the ability to search and, you know, tie a, a dashboard widget to a network element. Uh, so those are again part of our uh, in-memory database that gets built. Okay. Other thing that we do for the, um, the some of the analytics information, the top tens and other queries that you see. Um, so as we get the uh, the raw data that goes into our raw buckets, uh, while we are aggregating this information, so we roll up on the fly or. You know, it's not in a form that, you know, where if you're looking only at one top 10 piece information at the system level, so you can maintain separate structures for that. Uh, but we massage the data in, in such a format that these calculations, the top 10 query hits, are pretty responsive even at scale. Yeah. 
And then so we have uh, in, the ability to tune some of this, like one of the knobs that we talked about is, you know, how uh, if you need to adjust this frequency between 30 seconds to a minute, you have, or you have that ability. Okay. Uh, that's the overall uh, architecture. So what you see is, you know, your NX uh, controller, multiple NX clusters. And uh, so this is, so this is your NX clusters and the Zebra Insight. So all of them hosted on your NOC. And then, um, so you have access points at the edge, uh, which is managed by this logical entity, RF Domain Manager. And so these are, this is the, the Mint links are our existing links. Um, so that goes, you know, there is, you know, there's a layer two as well as a layer three Mint network that is part of our standard uh, wing architecture that goes all the way up to our controllers. And the other thing that we have built as part of Zebra Insight is the, the HTTPS links which is the, um, the SSL tunnel. So these are persistent links. Like, so we, we had to weigh options of whether we can post this information that we collect uh, every 30 seconds or a minute in a fire and forget, or do we want to maintain a persistent SSL link between uh, the inside server, sorry, the controllers that are aggregating this information and the Zebra inside server. So we do have persistent links. And, between each out of domain manager, there is an SSL tunnel that is terminated on Insight. And then we also have um, a WebSocket link that goes between the controllers and the Insight. On the behind the scenes, so you have the message processing that handles all the you know messages that are hitting the uh, Insight server. And that gets delegated to the DBA interface and goes to a NoSQL database, which is uh, you know with non-blocking IO. So we run Node.js on both on all the friends in this interface, uh, with the ones that process the messages that are raw messages that are received from the RFDM, as well as you know there is a Node Node.js interface for the front-end applications, uh, the API interface that invokes that as well. Okay, any questions on this? Okay, so we also showed you um, the ability to do packet capture and wireless debug log uh, from the browser interface, uh, centralized interface on Insight. And so this is the underlying, you know, the building blocks as to how we implement this. So you have the local controller and so we have this capability today on our wing platform. So where you can do from the wing management interface, you can do packet capture or wireless debug log. So that is this link between here, right? So all this happens through our Mint links. When an access point gets adopted to the controller, so it establishes a Mint link. And so we have the ability to run, you know, packet capture or wireless debug log on any access point that is deployed on the edge. And on top of it, when we have Insight deployed as, an, uh, as a server entity, um, so we have uh, built these WebSocket interface, and uh, this gets, you know, when you initiate a packet capture request here through your Insight browser interface, so the initial request, you know, it is, you know, it's sent to the, uh, the respective RFDM to go execute on the access point if you chose a specific access point or across all access points. And initially, it, it will be transported across Mint. And once it hits the, um, the centralized controller where it is getting aggregated, then we use, we build this additional layer with uh, WebSockets that brings it across. Yeah. So the the actual PCAP or debug is sent through the through the NOC controller and then relayed to Insight. Is that yeah? The PCAP the the uh, the command to you know go do packet capture on the access point or a client is sent to the out of domain manager. What about the actual return result of all of that packet capture data? Because that can be a, a large amount of data if you run a packet capture across a bunch of APs. Right. Oh, yeah. Does that go straight from the APs to Insight, or does that, that go? That goes from the R of, R of domain man. So the link is, you know, from the R of domain manager to the NOC controller. It is our Mint link, which is existing, you know, infrastructure with the Wing 5 architecture. 
and from the knock controller to the inside it is through web sockets So the, our debugging tool, Spring Packet Capture, Wireless Debug Log, all leverage this, uh, you know, the underlying infrastructure. Um, so once we talked about uh, the air defense uh, platform, so the some of the capabilities that we have, like AP test, where an AP can act as a client and test other access points. So when we migrate those functions over, so we already have the infrastructure to, you know, uh, leverage that as well. Yeah. Okay, so the some other knobs. So what we when we collect this uh, 50 plus million data points, all of them go to a raw bucket, which is like uh, at the lower end of or the at the high end of it, it is like 30 second frequency, and uh, you know it can go up to you know two minutes, a minute or two minutes, depending on how you want to tune that, depending on you know the type of the number of CPUs you have deployed and you know the resource requirements on the inside server. Um, so we have other uh, buckets, like we aggregate this information into a 10 minute summary and then to an hourly summary and to a daily summary. Okay. Um, so the flexibility that we have is you, the, the customer can dis decide based on their requirements how long they're going to hold on to the raw information. Um, and then they can also determine uh, for the other buckets, you know, I would like to say, for example, I'd like to keep the raw data at the 30, 30 second interval for a couple of days or a week, depending on the size of the network and, you know, how much storage that you have. So you can change, you can, you know, tune that parameter. And then for each aggregation bucket, you have the uh, ability to uh, tune the duration as well. So that's that's what it does. Now, as you roll up buckets, yeah. is the data averaged? Is it min-maxed yes. or is it just flat average? You'll have average, min-max, all that goes into the 10-minute the hourly and daily buckets. Yeah. So other challenges, uh, how do we test this, right? So we don't have, uh, you know, 100K AP deployment with, you know, millions of clients that are connected on our, on our lab setup. So in parallel, as we, you know, set out to build this application, so we built a simulator parallelly, and the simulator is capable of sending any type of message that the inside server would receive, uh, which is typically, uh, uh, you know, JSON format, compressed JSON that we receive on the inside server. So the simulator is capable of mimicking mimicking an access point, and uh, you know it, it can you can use the simulator to configure uh, to generate traffic for hundreds of thousands of access points, and you can determine you know how many are configured on each site, and uh, you know you can you know how. You're going to you know simulate uh, AP going offline, online, all those events, and then client connecting. All those are part of our simulator, and so we test this on you know one good use of our cloud is you know run these simulators on the cloud, and we also have inside running on the cloud, so we have the ability to scale test this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, questions. Okay. So, uh, what's ahead for this? So, you saw, uh, you know, the custom dashboards. So, we have a bunch of widgets that uh, that's part of our library. So, we'll continue to add widgets to it. And some of these widgets today are pretty straightforward, simple widget that shows you, uh, you know, usage pattern or some top ten analytics, that kind of stuff. Um, so, we're also improving the widgets to, you know, where multiple widgets can act together, you know, provide kind of a workflow. And uh, also building comparison widgets where, you know, if I want to compare quickly how one site performs versus other, those type of things, those are happening from the, on, the, on the functional side of it. In terms of, uh, you know, some of the big rock that we're going to pull it into Insight. Uh, we already talked about, you know, AP test and Spectrum Manager that's part of uh, ADSP that's getting migrated over. Um, so we also, in the process of building a complete alarm management um, that is integrated into the Insight. 
And this alarm management functionality would allow us to leverage some of the tools like the AP test, packet capture, uh, other troubleshooting tools that we have. It's sort of think of it as, you know, let's say there is, um, so you have a high client retry rate say, as, as an alarm. So when we configure this, you have the ability to trigger some diagnostics. As you receive uh, an alarm, so automatically trigger diagnostics and that would, you know, and, you know, attach, you know, do a packet capture or, you know, get the event log, you know, go back, you know, 10 minutes uh, in the past and consolidate all the event log and send it. So it's the essentially how you troubleshoot and quickly resolve issues. So that's, that's, that's going to be a big focus for us. Yeah. Other thing, so we, with, with processing a lot of this data, and uh, plotting it on a time series. Uh, we also are looking at providing, you know, taking external interfaces, like where we can get feeds from, let's say, weather data, like which typically we focus on a lot of retail networks. So we can actually bring those additional parameters that, you know, you can superimpose on your, you know, usage chart or a client count chart that allows you to compare, you know, what is, why is this trend looking like it today? Or you have the ability to tag, like let's say if, I, if it's a Black Friday event or any such event that is happening within your, you know, retail network, you, you can go tag, a particular trend and give it a name and you know refer back to the tag and compare it with you know what trend that's happening later could be sort of an SLA baseline but we'll allow you to tag as many as you want and compare so on so hardware the, yeah you know I, we're spending a lot of time talking about all the software and what you guys can do and it's always you know it's always great to see it but from a hardware perspective I know a couple of things have changed in the hardware product line and I was wondering if everything, if you've moved that specifically so that all of these features are supported on the hardware, because I know a while back yeah. you couldn't do certain things with certain with certain pieces of hardware, but from the, everything so, from the, you know, single gang plates and hospitality, which is an amazing, yeah. I really wish you guys would, would have brought one of those out, you know, to talk about those, uh, but also all the way through your APs, this is all supported Across all all access platform. points are supported on uh, as far as the monitoring, management, analytics capabilities. The DPA engine exists on the 11 AC access point. So on the older legacy 11N access points, we, we don't have the uh, the DPA engine. Yeah. Okay. So you don't you won't you won't have the application visibility on that. But we do provide you know some you know destination capability you know tracking the destinations and all that's, that. Yeah. You know, look up. Yeah. And then like um, also licensing. I've, I ask everyone about licensing. Mm -hmm. What's licensing like on this? Uh, you know, say I've got a deployment where I've where I've put out, you know, 200 APs, 50 APs, whatever it is. How do you guys license? Is it per AP or is it per is it per it's C? Per, we, for this product, we have a subscription-based license that is per AP, and then you can have either uh, one or three-year subscription. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and actually, you brought up a good point um, because of the because of the it used to be Motorola um, situation. How far back in that product portfolio do you go? <coughs> from a support perspective, from, from a model of AP that's supported? All the way back to the beginning, every single Moto AP? So starting all of the 11N platforms, okay. Okay. Uh, any 11N platform and beyond are all supported, what Raj specifically referred to the application visibility and control. Yeah. Yeah. That is specific oh. to 11 AC access yes. points. Okay. And those so in terms of monitoring, those, troubleshooting, all that, you know, it's supported across uh, every... 6522 and... Yeah, the, absolutely. So 6522, the wall plate, 6511, yeah. all, that's all, of that, uh, all of the access points are going to be supported. And so for the AC, for the AC that you guys have, mm -hmm. Wave 1, you have the Wave mm -hmm. 1 product, Wave 2 product? Wave 2 product is going to launch Q1 of uh, 2016. Okay. Yeah. And uh, to answer your question in a different way, uh, if you see what like you know, Raj has presented up until now on this platform, a lot of it is around doing analytics on existing data, right? Yeah. So we have a wealth of data, like you know, that is being kept in the system, okay. and this is a way to expose all of that to make it meaningful and allow a proactive and predictive analytics for the network. So if I know what happened last Black Friday, I can actually prepare a little bit better for this time, right? And if Around. you have, if there's an existing installation like with an RFS 6000, can you take that data and run it through this as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. So the whole centralized architecture is 
like you know, big differentiation for us. So insight. Uh, so even if you have RFS six thousands at the edge, you would be able to aggregate and visualize okay. all of That's the analytics. I, that was kind of unclear to me, and I didn't got know it. because I've got I do have deployments with six thousands that are out there that have been out there. Yes, and collecting data, and they can be adopted on the on this insight framework as well. And when so insight. When is Insight going to be available as a whole, as a whole package? Is it available now? This is available now that is running co-resident on the 95XX platform. Okay. And as a, uh, as a VX platform, uh, in a release tracking to December, we are going to provide Insight with a scale of 100,000 okay. access points and 2 million clients. What about transitioning over from the VX9000 into this platform? I have a handful of APs that are on an older VX platform. Is that yeah? That, those sh or? it should be pretty seamless. I mean, VX, uh, you should be able to launch Insight from VX or from NX. It okay. really doesn't matter. Uh, the release that we are talking about is provides you the abstraction to have visibility for Across. multiple NXs okay. and VXs. Okay, right. thanks. Okay, so uh, what's ahead is like I was talking about alarm management. So you have the ability to tie that into you know trigger diagnostics. So it's to me it's, it is like you know a lot of call to action. Like you know you see this, so there's something. So you know call to action. So that type of functionality will be brought into you know dashboards, and then uh, if this happens, do this. Um, more kind of, you know, based on sensing, you know, what is happening on the network, you know, come up with the recommendation. And then the next is if this happens, you know, trigger diagnostics and uh, see if, if, if it is possible to recover automatically. Uh, that's uh, one thing. And finally, you know, see if we can predict the problem before it occurs. That's, that's our ultimate goal. You know, we can do some uh, machine learning, you know, trending in terms of what are all set of events that led up to some, you know, um, an alarm or a catastrophe that we can predict some of those trends. So those are the, uh, you know, goals for this product, yeah. Uh, and uh, just to uh, uh, top it off, uh, this whole insight, we, we today have a hosted cloud solution. Mm -hmm. um, we are providing a multi-tenanted version of insight to add on to our cloud offering, and that can be on Amazon or any other cloud provider. Uh, that is the solution that is going to launch uh, Q1, hopefully, or first half of the 2016. And there is, I know we've brought up multi-tenancy with a couple of different vendors. There, it's it's built in. I mean, it's you guys have been doing this for mm -hmm. quite a while. Yeah. Um, and I know multi-tenancy was something that was asked for very early on. And there are multiple levels. I mean, there's there's right. guests, there's read only, there's administrator, there's I think there's even the manager, operator, right. something like that. Yeah. So, if so with Insight, uh, we also have the ability, like if you deploy Insight centrally, if you are a sub, you know managed service provider, you want to provide visualization and you know that just expose that interface to you know many of your tenants. You can actually tie a user role to uh, one or more of the out of domains, yeah. and the left nav tree that you saw on the left side, you know what are all the sites that is available. That that is you know determined based on you know the login credentials and reporting as well, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I have to be honest. When we first started talking, or when we first heard the agenda, and we're going to be talking about analytics, um, I, I sort of understood. You know, we've been talking with analytics for with a bunch of other folks for maps with dwell times and heat zones, and you know, clustering of clients and things along those lines, and taking that and feeding it back into some sort of a business intelligence driven, you yes. know, conversation. Not analytics of how the system is performing. And that's that's that's. I, I guess I feel. I guess insight feels more like analytics of how the system is performing, as opposed to um, no, those business intelligence type of that one piece of it. Um, so when uh, Sunali talks about impact, so you know what what we can, what we are also doing is like we have we collect this application profile. So if it is a guest user, so we actually support APIs uh, from insight where you can call. Uh, you know, we here, this again can be you know whether you subscribe to these, um, you know, messages, events, where you get a feed for a profile of the client in terms of device profile, mm -hmm. voice profile, all that, plus, you know, for that 10 minute duration or whenever we are getting it, you get the complete application fingerprinting for that. So you can make marketing decisions based on that, yes.